brought in an apple today. And I said and I washed it with soap and water. You know, it's funny when um, you buy food right now. You know, when should you eat it and when should you wash it? You know, I try to most of the time just let the food sit for a couple of days, so the virus will will hopefully die. And how long the virus lasts for? You, you hear the different situations like popper lasts for seven hours, cardboard about two hours, aluminum up to four days. I think we're learning more and more about that because some of the virus particles have been found um, on that cruise ship, um, I think around, right around day 16 or so. I don't know if they're actually viable particles or not. So, you know, it's that uh, this social isolation is important and uh, the curve is flattened in Ontario for now. It doesn't mean the virus won't come back. It just means we did a good job of um, isolating ourselves and... Um, and, you know, how do we isolate ourselves safely? Um, to me, uh, when I first saw this virus and I talked to a lot of people, is that some people decide just to lock themselves in their, their homes and their houses. Um, to me, um, what, I, what I do is that uh, I now go outside on a regular basis and I go bike riding. So I will ride between 20 to 60 kilometers, say 30 to 40 kilometers, and uh, I feel very safe. I'm out in the country. Um, I maybe cross a dozen people along the way. We keep our distances. I feel uh, much safer than the local supermarket. And, uh, so people have to decide what they want to do, and uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that. Okay, we're now live, Dr. Kernu. All right, well, let you start off. All right, so let me just share the slides. Thank you guys for joining us today. We'll be talking about exercise and well-being. And there we are. Well, welcome. So um, I was just talking about uh, my day and your days. And um, so um, today I start. I got up around 4.30 in the morning. And uh, it is uh, 7 o'clock. And I still have another medical webinar to attend to after this. So i um, trying to keep fit and healthy. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. And before I forget is please enjoy all the webinars. Uh, thank Erica for, and her team for putting this one together. Um, for those who can attend this one, they can join at any point in time. We're going to leave open for questions and comments. Um, let's just have a good time and uh, talk about uh, how we can exercise and, and be safe. Um, one of the things that I'm doing is I'm weighing myself every day, and I was disappointed with myself. I weighed today 174 pounds. Uh, I was down as low as 170 uh, sometime last week, but it slowly creeped back up. My goal weight is to be 165 pounds. I figure that uh, this uh, COVID-19 virus is going to be around for a long time in different ways, and we can talk about that a little bit later if you like. I want to be as healthy as I possibly can, both mentally and physically. Um, so if I'm unfortunate to get the virus, which I think many of us will get at some point in time before the um, vaccines are, are available, we need to be in the healthiest state possible. So uh, today we're going to explore our mental health as well as our physical health. So uh, I'll let Erica take it from now. Perfect. Sorry, give me just one second. Okay, well, well, she's bringing up the technical part, as that um, technology has never been my forte, and uh, I am completely blessed to have uh, a bunch of young people. So, again, I went to this medical conference about technology, and the best way to get better technology, ask a young person. Um, and uh, we have some really smart young people that are going to be chatting today. How's, it, how's, that, uh, how's everything working today, uh, Erica? Pretty well. I just need one second to figure well, out how to share the screen. Bit. You tell me when you're ready to, to jump in. I'll just keep chatting for a little bit. Um, okay. I was saying that um, I use Fitbit. Does everybody else, anybody else use Fitbit at all? There's ways of um, asking questions. You can either do it um, uh, by typing in your answers or by unmuting yourselves at some point in time. Um, when when you're not talking, just make sure you mute your voice so uh, we can hear all the, uh, the speakers in the presentation. Uh, 
you can see my I, I started to grow a little beard over here what happens is that mondays i go to the hospital and so monday mornings i always shave in case i have to wear or one of those m95 masks uh, the rest of the week i just wear uh one of these surgical masks if necessary um but uh to me this isolation uh, we can totally isolate ourselves or we can sensible about how we isolate and get out for a walk and, and motion uh, we're going to have our Dr. Phil in a sec over here. Is that, is that how we're going to open the, uh, the, the event tonight? Yes, that's right. Okay, finally got it started. Thank you for oh, your patience. On, you okay? <laughs> so we'll just play this little clip. Does anybody have any um, thoughts on some of the things that people want us to cover, and things of that nature? Um, this will be recorded, so people can go back to look at it afterwards. Um, I'm trying to, uh, I want to remind us that there's a whole bunch of recorded um, sessions. They're all there. Uh, more recently, there's one on intermittent fasting that was produced, one on congestive heart failure. We're having some on um, diabetes, diet, exercise. But I think our sense of well-being are, are really important. For to eat more calories, I need to exercise more, and um, so I, I can eat three thousand five hundred calories by by exercising, doing my ten thousand steps most days, or my bike rides on the stage. Um, are we ready, Erica? Yes, I think I figured it out. Uh, great. So, um, when, and we also have a few technology. We have a oh, there's a beautiful one. Sonia has just prepared a, a one about technology. She's done a series of them. The first one is going to come up on uh, on YouTube shortly, and there's a couple more to follow. And you know, I think we're all being forced to use technology more. Um, I think there all this with uh, with the world. And, um, so my motto is: I'm going to be as healthy as I possibly can. If I I can get um, COVID virus, um, and I'll be the best shape possible. Far away. Okay. Oh, no. So that was one of the pictures from the hospital, and here's someone out on, um, on a nice, beautiful trail. Hi, my name is Phil, and I am... Uh, one of Dr. Kernu's uh, patients, and... I'm trying to keep an active lifestyle in these uh, times of COVID-19. Of course, our gym is closed. And so we've come to, uh, we're here at our house, and we have this nice trail here. It goes along the forest, and we walk on country roads. We're trying to do uh, five kilometers. Brisk walking. Uh, we're looking at the birds and the migratory birds, and we can see foxes and the occasional deer and uh, lots of migratory birds are really enjoying our time in peace with, with each other and enjoying our company. Uh, and so I'm off, and I hope you are well and keep exercising and just make Thank you. That's our Dr. Phil, the, the best Dr. Phil I know. And one of the things I want to always mention is that uh, I go on my uh, bike rides and uh, I get on the phone and uh, call both him, Joanne, and his wife and have some chats along the way. So part of my connection when I'm exercising is I go up for uh, a few hours and um, I do it uh, on a regular basis. Now that I'm back in the office, I can't do it as much as I can, but I'm, um, uh, I really enjoy the 
being the outdoors, being safe, not around people. Also, talking to my my good friends and uh, Phil and Joe, Joanne are two wonderful people to chat with, and uh, so I appreciate their their uh, their, their their wellness. Um, uh, Doctor Phil has heart disease, and he's certainly kept it kept it in check. His wife um, is, a, is a wonderful physician as well. So they're both actually semi-retired uh, family doctors that are colleagues, but also wonderful friends. And uh, they, they taught me a lot about friendship and exercise. And uh, and uh, I thank them for, for that. Erica. Perfect. Uh, the next slide. So this was Monday in the um, exercise lab. So you can see that um, here I'm at the hospital and you can see is that jovial gentleman and um, he's struggling and uh, you know how do we get from someone like this to getting healthier all the time is that yeah, I know we, we got to keep working at this so my, my thinking is if, if we're going to all just isolate ourselves and not move it's going to be just too easy to gain weight and, and get sick in that way so um, I want to encourage you to be safe but to find ways of um, enjoying mother nature if you feel that's the right thing to do for you and um, and to, to work on reduction. So we're going to transform this gentleman to the Dr. Phil you saw before. Let's, how are we going to do that, Erica? Okay, well, we'll tell you right now. So the magic potion, one of them is probably exercise. And we'll talk about exactly how this is the case. So I want to introduce a little TED Talk clip, if it loads well this time. But it's by a neuroscientist named Dr. Suzuki, and she studied the benefits of exercise on the brain and does a really great job of illustrating that. So I just share a little clip right now. I love TED Talks. What if I told you there was something that you can do right now that would have an immediate positive benefit for your brain, including your mood and your focus. And what if I told you that same thing could actually last a long time and protect your brain from different conditions like depression, Alzheimer's disease, or dementia? Would you do it? Yes. I am talking about the powerful effects of physical activity that is simply moving your body has immediate, long-lasting, and protective benefits for your brain, and that can last for the rest of your life. So what I want to do today is tell you a story about how I used my deep understanding of neuroscience as a professor of neuroscience to essentially do an experiment on myself in which I discovered the science underlying why exercise is the most transformative thing that you can do for your brain today. And so now, after several years of really focusing on this question, I've come to the following conclusion, that exercise is the most transformative thing that you can do for your brain today for the following three reasons. Number one, it has immediate effects on your brain. A single workout that you do will immediately increase levels of neurotransmitters like dopamine, serotonin, and noradrenaline, that is going to increase your mood right after that workout, exactly what I was feeling. My lab showed that a single workout can improve your ability to shift and focus attention, and that focus improvement will last for at least two hours. And finally, studies have shown that a single workout will improve your reaction times, which basically means that you are going to be faster at catching that cup of Starbucks that falls off the counter, which is very, very important. But these immediate effects are transient. They, they help you right after. What you have to do is do what I did, that is change your exercise re regime, increase your cardiorespiratory function to get the long-lasting effects. And these effects are long-lasting because exercise actually changes the brain's anatomy, physiology, and function. Let's start with my bra favorite brain area, the hippocampus. The hippocampus or exercise actually produces brand new brain cells, new brain cells in the hippocampus that actually increase its volume as well as improve your long-term memory. OK? 
okay? And that, that in, including in you and me. Number two, the most common finding in um, neuroscience studies looking at the effects of exercise, long-term exercise, is improved attention function dependent on your prefrontal cortex. You not only get better focus and attention, but the volume of the hippocampus increases as well. And finally, you not only get immediate effects of mood with exercise, but those last for a long time. So you get long-lasting increases in those good mood neurotransmitters. But really, the most transformative thing that exercise will do is its protective effects on your brain. Here you can think about the brain like a muscle. The more you're working out, the bigger and stronger your hippocampus and prefrontal cortex gets. Why is that important? Because the prefrontal cortex and the hippocampus are the two areas that are most susceptible to neurodegenerative diseases and normal cognitive decline in aging. So with increased exercise over your lifetime, you're not going to cure dementia or Alzheimer's disease. But what you're going to do is you're going to create the strongest, biggest hippocampus and prefrontal cortex. So it takes longer for these diseases to actually have an effect. You can think of exercise, therefore, as a supercharged 401k for your brain, okay? And it's even better because it's free. Okay. Wow. Powerful words. So uh, exercise is free, and we see there's a lot of different benefits. Um, but what we hope to offer you today is not only what those benefits are, but how you can engage at home and exercise safely to your best benefit. Now I can hear. And, um, um, I'll talk about uh, some of the benefits of exercise briefly. There's some um, immediate um benefits the, for brain health that happens right after a session of exercise, such as reduced short-term feelings of anxiety and better sleep quality, um, which we'll talk about later, more uh, about the brain health. And then there's some um, physical benefits, such as uh, weight loss and reduced risks of disease. So uh, there's studies that show that you can reduce cardiovascular disease um, just with the recommended 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity um, exercise. And uh, you can do this by reducing blood pressure and improving cholesterol levels. And uh, you can also help with type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndromes. Uh, studies show that just by starting to exercise, even less than the recommended 150 minutes, you start seeing benefits with uh, sh blood sugar control. And so if you already have diabetes, it can help with that as well. Um, and then we have uh, things such as uh, there's studies showing uh, benefits to, um, can you go back? Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. And then uh, with cancer as well. So exercise can reduce the risk of commonly, um, co commonly ha occurring cancers such as lung cancer and things like that. And then we also have uh, benefits of bone density and muscle strengthening. So research shows that during um, aerobic muscle strengthening and bone strengthening physical activity, you can have uh, a slow the loss of bone density as you age. And that uh, decreases the risk of falling and even the risk of um, injury after you fall. And then things with arthritis as well with exercise, you can have um, reduced pain and um, you can manage daily activities better if you have arthritis. And overall, exercise is just better for the quality of life and longevity. So you have a 33% lower risk of all-cause mortality when you have at least 150 minutes of exercise a week. Yeah, next. So more into the brain health benefits of exercise. Immediately, you would have um, a better mood. So endorphins come, that come with exercise would help you reduce, like, trait anxiety. Um, I mean, state anxiety, and then um, you will have uh, better help with um, sleep. So you would have improved quality of sleep. Um, it would lower your time to fall asleep and your um, time in bed sleeping rather than trying to fall asleep, and also a deeper quality of sleep. 
and also reduces um, daytime sleepiness, which is a problem that a lot of people tend to have when they don't have um, a good quality of sleep during night, the night. Um, and then long-term exercise, so habitual exercise, can help with cognition. So people with um, a lot of physical activity can experience improvements in uh, cognition, their mental processing speed, memory, and executive functions. And it also lowers the risk of developing cognitive impairments such as dementia and Alzheimer's. So as the talk said, like it reduces um, the time, it, or it increases the time it takes for these diseases to get to you and cause its effects. And then, um, it can help with long-term anxiety and depression. So uh, habitual physical activity can reduce these long-term feelings of anxiety and um, help de decrease the risk of developing depression. Yeah, so these are all the benefits that you receive from um, exercising. And then there's also exercising, which we're, we traditional think, traditionally think of weight management. So it can help maintain your weight um, as well as lose weight, depending on how you go about it. So um, s people recommend that you start building up to exercising 150 minutes a week minimally. Um, so that's uh, to receive these benefits and help maintain your weight. Some people might need more depending on how much you weigh and your lifestyle and things like that. And if you want to lose weight, you can add more exercise into the 150 minutes and also alter the way you eat because at the end of the day, it's all caloric balance. So I gotta just pause here for a second. Here's where I think it's is that that there's no doubt in my mind that I feel bad that most people don't have the joy of exercise and activity in some way. Um, to me, it's one of my religions, and it's um, something that uh, I'm blessed that my wife is much fitter than myself, and we we work at it. Uh, number two is that. If you do 30 minutes of activity most day, you'll lower your risk of a heart attack by 25%. If you want to lose weight and keep the weight off, you need to do 60 to 90 minutes most days to get the weight off. So those are some numbers that I keep in my brain. Now, the best way to prevent a person, uh, Erica, by any chance? Um, I think it's um, it's, the, uh, the speakers and stuff like that. So that. On the line, if um, if you guys can mute yourselves and uh, so, so we so it doesn't interfere with all the talks, and we'll have all plenty of time for all your questions and. This technology is hard for people of my age and older, but we're, we're getting better at it. So it's just working on it. Wonderful. So just to summarize, is that 30 minutes most days will lower your risk of heart disease by 25%. 60 to 90 minutes most days will make it important for you to keep the weight off. And the best way to treat and prevent Alzheimer's disease is activity, just walking every day. Again, the best benefits from exercises is going from, some, from nothing to something. So lots to learn over there, and I think it's just wonderful. Take it away. Um, so now we're going to talk a little bit about well-being and how that ties into exercising. So talking about some of the implications and how exercising is good for mental health. So exercise in general is linked to improved mental health. A study of 1.2 million people in the United States, which was a large observational study, basically found that people who exercise, who exercise report having fewer than 1.5 um, days of poor mental health a month as compared to people who do not exercise. So you tend to see the biggest reductions in poor mental health when you look at different activities such as team sports, cycling, aerobics, and going to the gym. So just in general, keeping physically active can really help reduce the amount of mental health days that you're having. Team sports especially um, involve finding support within like the community around you. And it also provides a social aspect to actual exercising, which can be really beneficial, especially if some people are having a little bit of difficulty starting off um, with exercising because that social aspect can be a motivational factor as well.
So one big question that comes up when we look at exercising is, is exercising more better? Um, and the answer is actually not always um, yes. So basically more exercising is not necessarily better. Typically exercising 45 minutes, three to five times a week is found to have the biggest benefits. Doing exercise more than 23 times a month or exercising for longer than 90 minute sessions can often be associated with worse mental health. So it's important to find the balance that works for you. So exercising enough that you're feeling really good mentally, but not pushing yourself to the point where it is causing you additional stress. Nice. I'm on this session for new all day. Yeah, thanks for joining us there, Johnny. Yeah, just um, right. Yeah, so we, we this way we have it every Friday. We have also on a regular basis. Uh, he's at Mac and he's got uh, all the people. He's got about nice for being there, you know, and uh, he's talking about health. Anyhow, I turn it. You know this young guy here, uh, Johnny, oh, actually was able to bring over uh, soccer teams and different sports teams to uh, the different parts of the for young people and exercise. So thank you for uh, for doing that uh, um, in your life. So I, can you just mute yourself for a second over here so you can just listen to everybody else here? We'll talk more in a few minutes. Let's, let's hear about a little bit more of exercise and anxiety and depression. Okay, so with respect to anxiety and depression more specifically, exercise has a lot of different benefits. We covered some of them a little earlier on, but we'll talk about them in a little more detail. So the first thing is that the act of exercising itself can divert your focus from any topic that might be causing you anxiety. So if there's something that you're fixating on that's causing you a lot of stress, the act of exercising takes you away from that both physically and mentally. So it helps kind of divert your focus and calm you down. Eric, can you mute? Can you mute, mute uh, Mr. Kiropopoulos? Can you mute that mic for me? Yeah, give me just... one second. Uh, I'm just going to make a few adjustments over here. Okay. Um, I, think, oh, ahead, I, I think I was muted. Okay, I'll continue. Um, yeah, we're we're muted now. Fire away. Thanks a lot. Sorry about that. So we'll let you use this technology. We'll get there. <laughs> um, with respect to exercise, it also helps decrease muscle tension. So in general, when you're stressed or if you have anxiety, you tend to hold muscle tension in different places in your body, and the act of exercising can help dissipate some of that tension. Exercising also changes the brain chemistry, which can be very helpful to people who have anxiety and depression. Exercise causes the secretion of a variety of different chemicals. These include serotonin and GABA, and there's also brain-derived neurotrophic factor, just to name a few. And the chemical changes can help with mood enhancements. So when we talk about getting like that endorphin rush after, say, going on a run, that applies to like various other types of exercise as well and people in general can feel better after exercising. Um, studies also show that people with major depressive disorder who exercised experienced improvement in their condition, just like you would expect to see with those who were prescribed antidepressants. So exercise doesn't necessarily replace treatment for these conditions, but can help supplement treatment and help people feel better. It also activates regions of the brain so exercising can activate the frontal regions of the brain, which can help control the regions of your brain that sense danger. So when we're naturally afraid and sense danger, our body responds with a series of responses that are called fight or flight. So this is essentially responses that are designed to get us away from danger. In people who have anxiety, they tend to sense a lot of different stimuli that signal to them that they're in some sort of um, state of danger. So exercise is kind of like exposure treatment in that respect, where people learn to associate the symptoms with safety rather than danger. 
Um, exercise also increases your resilience to strong um, emotions. So overall, it helps you feel better through a variety of different fronts. It helps you feel a little bit physically better when you suffer from anxiety and depression, as well as mentally better because of all of the changes that occur. So this entire like observation is kind of referred to as exercise effects. We're going to discuss a little bit how that works. So there are many theories speculating why exercise has such a significant effect on mental health and mood. And there likely isn't a, set, a single mechanism that's at play here. It seems to be that there are many different factors. So there's an increase in serotonin and endorphins. There's also the idea that exercising can provide you with a sense of meaning and accomplishment. And there's also the promotion of neuron growth and sleep. All of these different aspects kind of work together to help improve your physical and your mental health. More specifically, if you think about moderate aerobic activity, that's known to help increase deep sleep. So being mindful of when you exercise and how it can make you sleep harder at night um, one potential suggestion might be trying to exercise at least one to two hours before bed, especially if you're someone who struggles with sleeping, it'll help you get a deeper sleep at night. And now, um, Monica? Thank okay, you. That so... Was you got, you got, I'm sold. <laughs> I just got to um, make sure I do it more, more and, and over again, and if I don't do it one day, I go I do it the next day. So you get benefits from just going from little bits to to, um, to, to modest amounts. You can see that maybe many people can overdo it, but um, most of us underdo it. Monica. Exactly. Okay, so we're just going to go over a couple recommendations we have for getting started with exercising. Um, so like was mentioned earlier, you want to be getting at least 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity the activity or 75 minutes of vigorous activity um, but you can definitely combine both if you'd like to try that um, and you should be trying to spread your exercise throughout the week so that you're maintaining a certain routine rather than concentrating it all at once and overall the goal would be to stay active and just generally spend less time sitting next slide um, so specifically you should be trying to incorporate these five elements into your fitness um, into your exercise routines because each of them do different things for your body. So um, first with warm up, uh, like stretching, it's mainly designed to get your body warm and moving to prevent any injuries later on. Um, next with cardio, uh, this includes activities that are intended to make you sweat more. So things like running, jogging, or cycling. Um, and then for resistance, it's essentially directed towards working out a specific group of muscles in your body and building strength. Um, so this can include exercises such as push-ups and squats. Um, for flexibility, such as yoga, it aims to help improve posture, balance, and prevent injuries as well. And then finally, um, cool down ties together your overall workout by bringing your body down from the exercise regime and easing it back into your normal state. Um, so... As I mentioned before, you should be aiming for 150 minutes of moderate or 75 minutes of vigorous activity per, per week. So um, here are a few points that kind of help define what each of the intensity levels mean. Um, so for example, for moderate, things like your breathing quickening, but you're not out of breath versus with vigorous, you would be having deep and rapid breath. Um, so activities like Risk walking, light yard work, casual biking, those would all fall under moderate exercise, um, whereas activities like jogging, running, swimming laps, jumping rope, or doing competitive sports like basketball would more so fall under vigorous. Um, and with either type of intensity, it's important not to overexert yourself and know your limits. Um, so on the next slide, we have a quick chart that kind of outlines the target heart rates you should be aiming to achieve for each of the different intensity levels. So your maximum heart rate can be calculated as 220 um, minus your age, um, but things like blood pressure medication might lower this maximum heart rate. So you should take that into account when you're looking at these sorts of charts. Um, so based on the descriptions of moderate and vigorous intensity from before, um, for moderate, you want to be reaching from 50 to 70 of your maximum heart rate. 
and vigorous should be about 70 to 85 percent and so this kind of chart is a good way to see whether the activity you're reaching is um, enough for moderate or vigorous um and so this slide kind of brings up a few key points that we discussed as well as some things to note so overall even uh some activity is better than none so you just want to be moving more and setting less um, so for older adults, your weekly activities should be focusing on things like balance, aerobics, and muscle training, um, some like examples of which we'll be going over pretty soon. Um, you want to be remaining active but being safe as well, so this involves understanding limitations you might have due to certain health conditions and ensuring that you're not overexerting yourself. Um, and then to summarize qu pretty quickly, um, so moderate activity is essentially anything that gets your heart beating faster than normal. And for additional benefit, you can also focus on things like muscle strengthening. So things like bicep curls or stretching, um, adding those in for at least two days a week can improve the benefits that exercise has. Um, and when you're getting started with an exercise regime, you should ensure to ease into it and not start right away with a difficult program. Um, it's been shown that starting out too hard in a new exercise program may be one of the reasons that people are often discouraged from continuing to exercise. Um, more so, going beyond your limit can actually lead to injury and over-exercising can have the opposite effects um, of the benefits that we discussed. Um, and like Aditi mentioned, uh, more exercise is not always better. So instead, you want to be focusing on making physical activity an enjoyable habit instead of a chore so that you're more motivated to do so. And um, if you aren't able to go outside, there are still plenty of ways that you can incorporate the different elements of exercise into your home. So um, you can use household items like chairs to help you stretch better. Um, you can follow online classes for yoga. These can be a great way to condition yourself as they strengthen your core muscles but they also help with flexibility. Um, other household items such as cans can be useful to continue regular exercises like bicep curls and weighted squats, uh, which are great for keeping strength up. For things like cardio, we suggest trying to do exercises that require a lot of movement, um, like jumping jacks or even running or jogging on the spot, which can help get your heart rate up. And overall, the important thing to remember is to take it at your own pace. Um, because you might need a little bit of trial and error before you find out what works for you. I just like walking, biking, and doing something. Okay, hey, great. So, uh, next slide, please. So, before we get into more specifics about what kind of exercises we can do, uh, I'd like to talk about the six minute walk test. So as the name implies, the aim of this test is to walk as far as possible in six minutes. And the key word here being walking, so you're not running or jogging, it's just walking as far as you can. Um, the purpose of this test is essentially to gauge your uh, functional capacity and to see how capable you are for exercise. So to do this test, what you would do is that you'd measure out a distance of about 30 meters and you can mark it with anything from like a phone, a water bottle, whatever you can find. And basically what you do is that you walk back and forth from these points uh, for as long as you can for six minutes. If it's necessary, you're allowed to slow down, to stop or to take a rest. But the point again of the exercise is to test your functional capacity. So as soon as you feel better again, and you feel capable, what you're gonna wanna do is to continue your walk until the end of the six minutes. Um, you're going to want to measure your blood, your blood pressure and your heart rate before and after. And I'll explain that a little bit more in, uh, in the next slide. So again, this walk test is, it provides useful information for medical therapy and measuring functional status related to, uh, to various diseases. So examples include coronary artery disease, heart failure, peripheral arterial disease, pulmonary arterial hypertension, and... So heart disease is blocked arteries, heart failure, your heart can't pump properly, peripheral vascular disease, you have blockages in your legs, pulmonary artery hypertension, depression, your lungs are elevated. And so, uh, besides being able to gauge uh, your capacity for exercise, one 
a very good idea, a good reason to do the six minute walk test before you actually start any exercise is because uh, this test can be used as a good initial indication of exercise intolerance with those who have cardiovascular disease. So essentially, if you're a patient with a cardiovascular disease and you're exercise intolerant, it's better to do this test and to find out that you're exercise, exercise intolerant before you actually start doing any exercise. And uh, next slide. And so here is an example of an exercise record. You don't have to follow this exact uh, layout, but there are a few key things that you would want to record every time you do the six minute uh, walk test. So first of all, you'd like to record the date. Um, this is important because uh, what you can do is that you'll do the test every once in a while uh, in between your exercises. So for example, before you start exercising, you'll do this test. And then you'll do a month of exercising, and then uh, by the end of that month, you'll do the test again. This will help you figure out if by the end of that month, this exercise has actually helped to improve your performance. And by that, I mean you'll be able to walk farther in the same amount of time without getting tired. Um, another very important thing you'd want to record, again, is your pulse and your blood pressure if you have access to a blood pressure machine. For your pulse, you can use any heart rate monitor, like a Fitbit, if you have one. But if you don't have access to that kind of machinery, you can also use a 15-second pulse rate. So what you do there is that you find your, immediately after your exercise, you find your pulse at either your wrist or at your carotid artery in your neck. And in those 15 seconds, you count how many pulses you can feel. So for example, let's say I do exercise, and at the end of 15 seconds, I felt 20 pulses. I then take that number and multiply it by four to find beats per minute, which is the usual unit that we measure heart rate in. So in this case, it would be 20 times four, which is 80 beats per minute. Finally, the one of the more important things that you would want to record is your how you felt or how that exercise, how difficult that exercise was for you. You would uh, record the, this in something called a radi rating of perceived exertion scale or an RPE scale which is basically a scale of zero to 10, with zero being a super light exercise that you barely felt, and 10 being the most difficult, strenuous thing you've ever done. And again, the point of recording all of this is so that over time, as you exercise and you keep doing this test, you can see your improvement, you can see if there is any regression, and overall, it's good to track your health, both for yourself and to help, and for any qualified exercise professionals that are helping you um, with any conditions that you may have. So on this slide, we have an exercise work worksheet that we have prepared for you. Uh, feel free to, to complete a six minute uh, walk test in your own time. And when you do, you can fill out the results on this sheet and you can send it back to us on the email, uh, drkernuvolunteering at gmail.com. Everything is in the document, so uh, you can do that on your own. So you can, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a picture of it, um, and then um, just so if it, I've got my phone out, I take pictures of everything, um, and if you want to take a picture or some version of it. So I really want you to do this today, tomorrow or today and do it once a month, just to gauge your, your progress. So to me, you can't manage, but you don't monitor. So let's just see how fit we are and how we can get fitter. So everybody, can I ask you? you once a month walk for six minutes and record your steps in this fashion. Is that, is that something reasonable to everybody? I'm sure it is. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Keep going. Sorry, I'm really, this is really great. I'm learning a lot. So um, one of the things that, one of the major things that may be getting in the way of people doing exercise is that they feel that they need to have a gym membership or that they need to go to a running track or do something specific but in reality you can still do your exercises at home and you can take these exercises that may seem daunting or may seem difficult and modify them based on the space that you have and the equipment that you have yourself and you can tailor those exercises to best suit your needs and based on what you have available to you so no, I just could, I just make a comment here one of the things is that um you know, interesting, my wife doesn't like to go for walks with me because when 
when we go for walks, she loves to have these power walks. And I just like to walk and look around. Um, so, um, so you have to decide, you want your fitness right now or you want your mental well-being or something about. When I want to practice fitness, uh, normally, historically, I'd play squash, which I can't do right now, or I'm going biking. So, you know, so to me is that this is fun. You know, this is, doesn't have to make it, um, and, and, and boy, does it feel good. Thanks. Go ahead. So if you're thinking of getting into exercise, but you're not sure what to do or what you need to, what steps or what exercises even are, a great source on, on that you can find on YouTube, some great sources include the National Institute on Aging, Go for Life, and uh, Senior Fitness with Meredith. These are YouTube channels that if you search these in on YouTube, it'll bring you a selection of videos that show some modified exercises and stretches and things that you can do uh, at home. And none of these things require special machines or like large spaces. You can do this all at home. Um, also, generally speaking, there are yoga and share yoga videos. There is low impact follow along workouts. So really, uh, YouTube is a great source for you to find exercises and there's lots of uh, qualified sources, again, like the National Institute on Aging, which post videos that you can get reliable information for good exercise. And I think something that applies especially well to our current situation with, um, with the pandemic is that we can modify our exercises and stretches so that they are more suitable to us in our current situation. So, for example, uh, a lot of people may find doing a squat or doing a push-up difficult. And so what you can do instead of that is that you can modify the exercise to make it easier or to make it feel maybe less daunting. And again, as Dr. Kanu has said, a very big, the largest health benefits come from doing nothing to doing something. So again, even these, even if the exercises are easier or lighter, they still give uh, great benefits that are definitely worth exploring. So again, for example, with the chair squat, it's big. I got an idea. So what, the, the only exercise I don't want you to do is walk to the fridge and back. Ha <laughs> ha, bad joke. Sorry. <laughs> so with something like chair squats, uh, the benefit there is that for individuals who feel like they will fall off balance or they're afraid of going too deep into a squat, you can use a squat, a chair as a source of support and kind of like a safety net so that they can do the exercise. So it's not that they're not doing anything, but it still motivates them to do that exercise. There's also all push-ups, which is especially good for people who have uh, maybe wrist problems or carpal tunnel syndrome because wall push-ups don't put uh, as much pressure on your wrist as a full body push-up would. Um, another, uh, and a very simple way to get active is to just walk or run outside. Uh, it doesn't require any equipment. It doesn't cost anything. And uh, again, to meet the guideline levels of physical activity, which are 150 minutes a week, realistically, it may sound like a lot to hear 150 minutes a week. But realistically, that's only a 30 minute walk five days a week. So not even every day of exercise. And that uh, I think the, that they said it reduces your all-cause mortality by 50 percent, something like that. So it's immense benefit from. If you you don't have to do it all at once, if you want to do five minutes or ten minutes at a time, do it over and over again. So just just do something. And uh, again, spreading it out was a is a generally preferred spreading out your exercise instead of doing it all at once. Um. In terms of equipment, you can get creative. So again, as I mentioned with a chair, if you feel uh, that you need more stability or more support in your exercises, you can use a chair. Uh, you can use a broomstick instead of a barbell or some kind of uh, support system. Uh, you can use soup cans for weights, which I personally, I've seen videos of people who use milk jugs. And what they would do is they fill these jugs with either water or with sand or whatever they had to change how much the weight was and that way they were able to do different exercises all using the same equipment. Uh, and finally, you can also use scarves for stretching. Nice. So just something I found 
uh, interesting. So there was this 36-year-old runner who's been training for a marathon. And because of the pandemic situation, the the marathon was canceled, but that didn't stop him from wanting to reach his goals. Uh, he actually ran the full marathon, which is uh, 26.2 miles or over 42 kilometers, uh, just alone in his backyard. So that was about 873 laps, and he did this in under five hours. And that just goes to show, uh, realistically, if you could, if you can recognize uh, what you have at your disposal and you are motivated enough, you can you can achieve your fitness goals. And really, it's more of a matter of motivation than a matter of not being able to. So some of us might take us a week to do the marathon, but just do your marathon, or two weeks, or a month. Just do it. Finally, a great way to get active is Tai Chi. So we have a video from, the, from Harvard University are about the sixth or seventh leading cause of death in this country, and this is a very critical area of research because it is so common and it so often results in serious injury. One of the exciting interventions that we are studying is Tai Chi for its effect on balance and mobility. We introduced Tai Chi in our housing facilities, um, did a 12-week intervention in which they practiced Tai Chi for two days out of every week and compared their function at the end of this 12 weeks to a group of people who just sat in educational classes. And lo and behold, Tai Chi not only improved gait and balance, but improved their overall functional ability. I found the benefits for Tai Chi for me was relaxation, uh, lowering my blood pressure for sure. The movements are slow. It keeps me mindful of what I'm doing all the time. and. It, it, uh, it helps your thinking, I, I feel. So as we saw in the video, um, Tai Chi can work to improve balance, flexibility, and mobility, which are all ve uh, very important for reducing the risk of fall and injury. Um, tai Chi also aids in muscular system coordination, equilibrium, and the brain. So as you saw in the video, Tai Chi involves a lot of slow, uh, concentrated movements, which certainly help with coordination and uh, overall equilibrium and coordinating your muscles to make those uh, careful, um, coordinated moves. Uh, if you're interested in uh, potentially using Tai Chi as a way of getting active, uh, you, there are lots, again, YouTube is a great source. There are lots of follow along videos for specific audience. So whether you're a beginner, uh, if you want Tai Chi specifically for seniors, and there's even Tai Chi that are seated Tai Chi exercises. So maybe less strenuous for certain individuals. And yeah. Nice. All right. Uh -oh. And a video from Dr. Kernu about how he stays active. I go for my bike rides, I chat with people, I keep my safe distance. I think we're up to uh, 37 kilometers, out of 13 more to go for today. Nobody around, nice and safe. Get out there, be safe, and be active. We're back on the bike here, it's pouring rain. Rain or shine, I'm gonna find a way to be active if I possibly can. You too, as well. See, if I can do it, you can do it. All right, and that about ends our presentation on exercise and well being. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions, we'll open the floor to you all. First of all, I want to thank you all for taking the time to, to join us tonight um, and uh, thank Erica and her team. I want to just get a nice round of applause for all of them. Thank you so much. Big thumbs up. Please unmute all the mics and uh, let's, have, uh, let's hear how our people are exercising. Um, I know we started off with Dr. Phil 
and Joanne there, and uh, I've been bike riding with them from time to time. I'm not sure if they have a few words or comments or any 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 thoughts from anybody. Please share your thoughts. Anybody? Yeah, Frank and Joanne. Hi, it's Frank. Frank and Joanne, and uh, we've uh, we walk probably about an hour and twenty minutes a day every day. And when it's sunny, we get on our bikes and do another hour's worth of biking. Really enjoying it. Nice. Great. Anybody else? We're, we're doing much the same. Joanne and I just showed in the video. We're out here in Port Colborne, and. Uh, lovely spring weather and we walk about seven kilometers a day we divide it up when we want to air our heads and we're really enjoying it and I feel so much better uh, I, I, I think it's the greatest medicine yeah I, I totally agree in the sense of um, when I was in quarantine um, and I was able to go out in the middle of nowhere around nobody oh um you know we started off with that ted talk and what a, what a huge difference it's in five minutes of being outside a sunny day or even on a rainy day um good things happen thank you anybody else any other thoughts what do we see? people that um don't want to exercise well, let's hear some thoughts for them. i'm sorry go ahead who's next anybody I see uh, Johnny there before. Uh, he does a lot of exercise, and he actually brought some, some soccer teams to different parts of uh, young people to exercise. And that's wonderful. I look forward to uh, back to team sports or now individual sports. Erica, what do you do for exercise? Um, I used to do a little bit of karate, but I can't do that now, so I'm trying to run more, um, starting with walking outside. Um, and then working my way up to more long distance running. But right now for me, I'm taking it slow and just easing my way into it. Yeah, she wants to beat me on the CN Tower top line one of these days. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, for now, not yet. But uh, you keep working at it, and I'm sure it won't be long. And uh, it doesn't matter if you want to do your CN Tower climb or, or walk some stairs. But, you know, just doing it. I really like this idea of trying something and recording. So I find Fitbit, we have a Fitbit page. If you want to go to communities under Fitbit, please join us. Um, my steps are down during this uh, COVID-19 situation, but uh, um, I'm doing other things and, and biking is one of them. Uh, I'm just encouraging to uh, just the joy of participation. Yes, you can stay isolated. Yes, you can stay isolated and still be active too as well. So uh, find that what works for yourself. Anybody else? Hello? Yeah. Am I unmuted? Yeah, you're unmuted. Go ahead. Hello? Hello. Oh, hi. Welcome. Yeah. Hi, I have a question about the target heart rate that the slide that you had had there. So um, my heart rate runs really fast um, by itself on a good day, and it's beta blocked. So. When I'm looking for the target heart rate, I just take that formula of uh, 220 minus H, and then once I get to that target heart rate, that's where I stay. Is that the idea? Yeah, depending which one. Anybody, any of you guys want to comment there, or a young expert there? Okay, well, I'll comment. Go ahead, anybody else? Go ahead. Anybody else want to comment? I think the idea that you want to like work your way up to that heart rate. Um, I think the thing is, is that, like, because it goes so high so fast, even with, like, a gentle exercise will bring it up quite quickly, even with the beta blocker. So, like, the beta blocker works great, but if I were to exercise, it wouldn't take me very long to get to that target heart rate at all. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's true. It's kind of just relative, so, like, that's kind of a standard thing. So I'd say try to kind of work with what works for you. So if you feel like your heart rate's going up and hitting that zone really fast, and you feel like that's causing you any, like, symptoms or discomfort, um, just kind of, like, modify the exercise. So try to find, like, a range that works for you. Okay, great. The other thing to think about is that there's an irregular heartbeat called atrial fibrillation, and there's normal heartbeat. Uh, if you're in something called atrial fibrillation, 
your heartbeat will, will jump up quite a bit. The most important thing is is how you feel. If you're feeling good, um, part of the problem with increased heartbeat could be some part could be deconditioned for some people. Uh, sometimes it's a medical condition from the thyroid, raise your heartbeat, anemia. So it's worth discussing with uh, your healthcare provider. So next time you see me, we'll, we can look at that. But to me, as, as long as the heart's getting good blood supply, it's a good thing and you're feeling good. And we deemed it safe to exercise. So uh, very few people will pass away from walking. Um, but the people, unfortunately, who die from exercise at the end of a marathon, for instance, is that it's at the end of the marathon, the last one or two kilometers where you're trying to win that, that gold medal or your, or your basic time. So for most of us, is that uh, it's not a problem, and everybody has to look at it individually. So how you feel is very important. And we do stress tests on people to make sure that their blood, their heart's getting enough blood supply and that there's nothing wrong with the heart uh, to make it safe. Now, people who have heart disease benefit even more from regular activity. Um, so uh, it's something we'll have to talk individually about that. And we can talk about that a little bit later if you want to um, give the office a call and we'll figure that out for yourself. Great, thanks. Anybody else? Well, you know what? I think this is wonderful. And uh, I wish right now I can go for a walk, but I have to uh, do a little bit more work, call a few more patients, and another medical webinar. Uh, but I'm going to be out on my bike uh, sooner than later. And I really want to take the opportunity to thank all these young people and thank you for attending. This will be recorded. And um, I hope um, people use it and, and think about it. But I'm also going to encourage every one of us to do that six-minute walk test on a regular basis uh, and record that and judge our progress. Erica, do you want to say some final words? Yes, I'll just say thank you all for listening. You can access that six-minute walk test on our website, drkernu.com. Uh, it's also posted on our Facebook page. So those are two places you can find it, as well as in the description of the live stream that will be posted on YouTube. Well, be safe. Good night, everybody, and thanks for attending. And I'll hope to see you. We'll have more walks with the dog, more activities. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Have a great night.